Welcome, friends, to Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. We bring you the greatest female voices in the music industry, from the artists, songwriters, and producers, to managers and executives, and all the women who make the music industry what it is today. Thank you for joining us. Welcome, friends, to another episode of Crazy Women Country. I'm Donna. I'm Paula, and today we have Bri- Brianna. Oh my God, Calhoun, how you doing? Hey, guys, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it, and I'm doing well. Fantastic. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Um, so tell us, tell all our Crazy Women Country fans who is Brianna. Oh, wow. Well, that's opening up a can of worms. Where do I start? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I am a Texas born Louisiana girl. I've been in Louisiana since I was 11. I spent my summers here as a kid. And, um, you know, I have always been a singer songwriter. My mom was a singer songwriter growing up. Um, she was a Christian country singer songwriter. And, she even had a couple of, you know, top 10, top five hits actually in the Christian country realm back in the day. This was the nineties. And my grandfather played uh, at Radio City Music Hall. So it's just, you know, always been in my blood to write and sing and play music. But, you know, uh, there was a lot of things that happened when I was younger that just sort of prevented me from pursuing music the way that I really wanted to. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I fell into addiction. I got into some trouble and I even actually ended up doing some time in the state penitentiary. And uh, it was, you know, 18 months, which wasn't too terribly long of a time, but it was enough to make me know I never wanted to do that again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so then I just kind of worked on myself and uh, my, spiritual life and working on, you know, my mental health, et cetera, et cetera, and just trying to find some stability. And, you know, it took me a while and I actually ended up becoming a teacher, which I never thought was going to be possible, you know, with my background. But, um, you know, I think God made way for a way for me. And, uh, I ended up actually getting essentially special permission for that. And, uh, you know, it's around the same time I'd been dating who is my husband now. And, um, you know, I just was living the wife and then the mom mom life. And, um, you know, but songwriting's always been my heart and my passion. But because of everything that happened, I could never pursue it the way that I wanted. I never had the stability or the resources. I mean, it takes a lot to be an independent artist. You you just sitting there, you know, humming little songs and uploading them to YouTube is not going to get you where you need to go. You got to have some packing and you got to have some balls and you got to have, you know, so many things. And, and I was just never in that position um, up until recently. And I would say like about two and a half years ago, my daughter was like 18 months old. So really, no, not even, it's been a little over two years actually. I just woke up one day and, you know, I was like, just started bawling because it was just such like a heaviness in my heart. I was like, if you don't do something with your music, you're going to regret it the rest of your life. And I just felt like now's the time, like now's the time. And, and so I've been going after it full fledged ever since. And it's not been easy by any means. It's, actually been a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Um, There's a lot of uh, white noise. There's a lot of white noise out there and a lot of red tape and, you know, trying to get seen and heard when you're a drop in a bucket is really difficult sometimes. But at the same time, like I do think that God gave me a gift of music and I don't want to squander it. So I'm giving it my best shot. And, you know, I I have had some pretty cool things happen and been able to make some good connections and been able to get, um, I think a good foundation. Mm -hmm. And so we're just like looking forward to the future now and 
Um, as of right now, you know, I still am teaching and still am a wife and a mother and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's a lot to juggle, but I would say, um, if I had to answer who Brianna Calhoun is, she's a crazy woman of country. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> I love that. It's the best answer ever. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so we know that you just recently had a new single drop. You want to tell us about that new single and what inspired it and maybe even the, the writing process of it? So that one actually, like most of the time, I'd just be like, well, you know, I did this and I did that. But that one actually has kind of a neater story than most of my stuff for uh, my singles because um, <laughs> this is going to sound so terrible and I don't mean it to. But, you know, as a songwriter, you know, I mean, there's your brain is constantly thinking of hooks and ideas and you just can't help yourself. You know, if you hear something that's like a commonly known idiom or something and that hasn't been put into a song before, then, you know, your brain goes to, what about that? And, you know, I was watching that life alert commercial where the old lady's like, help, I'm falling and I can't get up. And I'm like, well, that would be a good line. Everybody knows that line, you know, <laughs> Poor old lady. I'm just like using her for my <laughs> music. But anyway, uh, that would be a good line. And and so, and I actually kind of was going through like a period of doubt and feeling that way a little bit at the time. And so I came up with the hook, the, the chorus, essentially, you're the first part of the chorus. And I put it on Instagram and I asked my followers to um, send in ideas for the verses. And I think I had about 20 people send stuff in and I uh, just kind of picked my favorite ones and, you know, then none of them I took verbatim because, uh, you know, it wouldn't have rhymed or had the same scheme at all or whatever, mm -hmm. but, you know, took like probably the top, I think seven or eight ideas that were kind of along the similar same lines, which was, you know, a broken heart, you know, and uh, just, put them together and, you know, tried to synchronize everything and, um, <clears throat> and ended up coming up with the verses and the bridge and, you know, then put it out there. And I just thought that was fun because it was a, you know, I love to collaborate. I love to co-write. I don't do it as much as I'd like to because mm -hmm. of the fact that I do live in Louisiana and travel to Nashville. Um, but that was, that was a fun experience because, you know, I had many, many people, um, <laughs> helping with the creation of that song. That must have been awesome for your fans to get involved in that whole process and, you know, feel yeah. so much more attached to the song. That's pretty cool. I love that. Yeah, I mean, I hope to do something, you know, similar to that in the future. Um, and actually, I'm going to Nashville, back to Nashville, July 9th, I'll be there for 10 days. And that's the purpose of this trip. You know, it's always been about, oh, I got to go up there and record, but I'm not recording at all. I'm just mm -hmm. co-writing and I'm playing some shows and I'm just going to try to network and, you know, collaborate with people because you can be the best songwriter in the world, but the chances are, you know, two heads are going to be better than one. So. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. it? That's definitely so true in the industry anymore. Like no one seems to co-write by themselves anymore or write by themselves anymore. I should say it's all about co-writing and two or three people. And, and it, it always, I think makes for an interesting twist on songs too. So. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, I always tell my students, I make most of, I make them do most of their work in groups. And so why we got working groups, Miss Calhoun, like, I just want to do it by myself. I'm like, cause I said so first of all. <laughs> <laughs> and secondly, because you gain new perspective when you're sharing ideas with each other, you know, like yes. it, when you're bouncing ideas off each other and you have those different perspectives mm -hmm. coming in, you're going to probably create something better than if it was just you working. And, you know, mm -hmm. if it's a true or false quiz, I won't make you work in groups. But if you're sitting there answering open ended questions or, you know, you have one idea that you got to elaborate on, let's let's mm -hmm. make it a group thing. Perfect. I think working as a group, you end up, you know, improving yourself because each time you work with people, you improve and improve and improve. And, uh, you know, I think yes. group work is, is 
you're hundred percent right. That's the other aspect of it too. I mean, it's yeah. just like you take those different perspectives and you learn from them. I mean, you know, I've written with people and just like seen the spin that they put on something or they've said, you know, we need a refrain here or we need to like, you know, repeat this phrase in this part of the song or, you know, maybe, maybe turn, turn this idiom inside out and say it this way instead. And, you know, things that I would not have thought of. And it does, it makes you better because you're going to think of it next time you write, even if you're not writing with that same person. So yeah. pretty yeah, cool. Absolutely. It's, really good. It's, it's a good growth process. So who are some of the women that have inspired you um, to uh, do music? Well, my biggest in okay, I'm sorry, you broke up just a little bit there. Um, my biggest inspiration is my mom because, you know, like I, we discussed earlier, she is a singer-songwriter, and I kind of grew up with that, and my grandfather was too, and they were both musicians. So, And, you know, she loved Janis Joplin and Joni Mitchell and James Taylor and kind of introduced me to all that stuff. And then... You know, growing up, I listened to a lot of Christian music. Um, so Amy Grant, I loved Amy Grant. There was a girl named um, Jennifer Knapp, who probably nobody <laughs> remembers now, but she was a singer-songwriter that I thought was awesome, a Christian artist. And then as I, I got older, I got into country. And, um, you know, this is funny. But the very first concert I ever saw was supposed to be Stephen Curtis Chapman, and it got rained out, and it got canceled. And then the instead of rescheduling Stephen Curtis Chapman for the concert um a guy named Paul Overstreet was rescheduled do you know who Paul Overstreet is by any chance I know the name okay well he is like a phenomenal songwriter um he's written so many hits um in the Christian and the country realm and has always been you know one of those guys that's been known for his songwriting more than his artistry, but just like such a great writer. And I just happened to see him on someone else's Instagram the other day that I followed and I was like, Oh my gosh, you're my first, you were my first concert. You're so awesome. Like, I just wanted you to know, I knew I wanted to be a songwriter when I saw you, blah, blah, blah. And he hasn't answered yet. Cause he probably thinks I'm just some weird fan girl, but you know, he might. We'll see. You never yeah, but he's written hits for, you know, the Judds, like Shelton, Randy Travis, mm -hmm. and um, so I know, and, and I know we're talking about females here, and I'm, I'm getting back to that. Um, you know, I, country, is, as far as when I was growing up, obviously, Shania Twain, Faith Hill, I loved Pam Tillis, I mean, who doesn't love mm -hmm. Dolly? You know, I like every kind of music. I don't just listen to country. I think you can hear that when you hear my songs. Um, I've never just listened to just one genre. I like every, if it's good music, I don't care what genre it is. I'm going to listen to it. Yeah. <clears throat> and so, you know, I, Fiona Apple was a huge influence mm -hmm. for me when I was younger. I loved Fiona Apple. Um, you know, she's just this weird white chick and I can't get enough. And, <laughs> and, uh, Alanis Morissette, love me some Alanis, you know, I actually, me and a friend of mine are supposed to be going to see her in, in August, so I'm super excited about that, and, um, you know, I'm trying to think of, you know, just, there's just been so many, I mean, I just try to consume as much music as I can, yeah. um, regardless, but as far as the women go, that that's probably the top ones, Besides, you know, obviously older Joni, Janice, um, Dolly, you know, in the country realm, like I said, Shania Faith and the rock realm, Fiona and, um, and Alanis, but there's just so many, like if it's good, it's good. And yeah. there's a lot of good music out there. There really is. You, you can't tell if you listen to the radio sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's the truth. I mean, it's like country radio, I think it's still 2% women on the airplay on most major stations on pretty much all FM stations, it seems. Um, Cause you can go 20, 30 songs without ever hearing a female song. So, so that is horrifying 
And mm-hmm. I'm just wondering how old that statistic is. Like, do you know that how recent that is? Because it's probably it's, still the same. It's not too old. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty much right in there. Last couple of years. You know, it's ridiculous because if you go to Spotify, which, you know, I kind of think radio is doing this and streaming services are doing this as far as, you know, who, who's the decision maker on, on the successful artists these days. But Spotify, it's, you know, still 50-50. So why are the airwaves still playing mostly men? Yes. I must admit, I don't even listen to the radio. Because it annoys me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I will say, now that you, you mentioned the streaming platform, I'm going to give a free plug here to uh, Gimme Country. But they have a fifth, they have like 50 50 in most of their sets. And, you know, they, they do fair play for women and men. And it's not, you know, all men or all women. I mean, they do specific shows sometimes with that. But, you know, it's great. They just have a great mix. So they do. they're awesome. Uh, a great radio station. But yeah, yeah. Know, it's, it's weird because it's like, why would you not? Why would you not do that? I mean, the population is women and men. So why would your airplane not match that? You're, I mean, I think they're shooting their own selves in the foot. I mean, to be totally honest with you, but I got to show, I don't know if y'all will be able to see this, but I saw this on a friend of mine's Instagram. Her name's May Estes. By the way, she's amazing. If y'all ever want to look her up, um, she just got a publishing deal and um, she's just, she, she reminds me a lot of uh, Alison Krauss, um, just like very, very pure voice. Mm-hmm. But I saw this on her Instagram and I had to steal it. And I hope that y'all are going to be able to see this. If you can, I'll just read it. But so it says <laughs> country radio up next, a commercial free hour of the hottest country hits the hour of hottest country hits. Oh. <laughs> you see it? Oh, yep. Oh, that is funny. Oh, that's great. Are, like just a row of frat uh, boys. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. So speaking of that, <clears throat> you know, not only is radio and airplay if it's really two percent like i just might have to go beat somebody up like that that. (laughs) i mean it's gonna be a white male obviously you know (laughs) i'm just kidding but if it's two percent and and you're probably right that's just Mm mind-boggling and then you know but it mirrors the music industry because if you look at the business side of music Mm -hmm. it's the same way i mean there is hardly any females in the business side of of music and you know like luckily there are females coming up right now that uh are producing and they are you know like making a name for themselves and they're working with bigger labels etc etc there's a girl uh, named Alex Klein, who I just fangirl over because she, you know, produced Tennille Arts, um, mm-hmm. number one song that just came out. And mm-hmm. she's amazing. She's a producer. She's a songwriter. She's a musician, et cetera, et cetera. But that's so rare. I mean, in, in all aspects mm-hmm. of country music, if you're going to collaborate with someone, it is so much harder to find a woman to do it with, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and, um, You know, nothing against men. I have plenty of guy friends, but, you know, my goal is to collaborate with more women. I I would love to have a female producer. I'd like to have an all-female band. But even up there, it's just difficult. Like, if there's females up there, they're like me, and, you know, they're pursuing the artist or the song Mm -hmm. songwriting route. But um, maybe next time when we do a Facebook live or something, I think I would like to play a new song for y'all. Um, it's called labels off and it's about this subject right here. And, uh, a, a songwriting friend of mine heard it. And he remember that, uh, that Maddie and Tay song that was like, uh, Put a girl in a country song or something. Yep. Yeah, yep. Girl, the country song. Yes. We had men dressed up yep. as women. And, yeah. 
Yeah, he, he said he was like, "This song is like that, but on steroids, like <laughs> or something <laughs> that effect. like because it's like just ripping them a new one, and it's called Labels Off, and it's just about that, like, and nobody cares about you standing around the campfire with your buddies drinking beer, or the girl you met in a bar, or like how much you love your hometown. Let let's do something different. Let's let's say something else. Come on." <laughs> Oh, that's perfect. We're looking forward to hearing that for sure. <laughs> Definitely. It's going to be awesome. But, I mean, I'm you make a great point even. Um, I think it was the Music Row magazine. And when you start looking at like the top writers even for the, you know, same thing. It's like most of them seem to be guys or, or you know, and then, then you see some women and it's like, okay, well, you know, we know that they've collaborated with men, but that's not the, you know, it's just like you'd think we'd have more women collaborating and in, in, in general in writing. But yeah, and thank God. You know, my husband is a secure person and doesn't, you know, understands that. I mean, this is a business. You have to look at it. If, if you really want to take this seriously, you have to look at it as any other business. But, you know, unfortunately, if I'm doing business with someone and I'm going up there to write or to collaborate or to record or have a meeting or whatever it might be, nine times out of ten, it's going to be with a male. Yeah. Um, but I do, I, you know, I'm going up there, like I said, mid July and I, I have several co-writes scheduled and I've tried to at least make it even and have just as many female co-writes as males. So I'm like, yes, you know, about that. I'm, I'm proud of that. And I think we're hopefully going to come up with some good stuff. Really awesome. Wonderful. Is... Look forward to hearing that too. Definitely. Oh, I got some good stuff coming. Like I'm very, we, I actually, you know, just did an EP in Nashville in March and we haven't released any of those songs. Um, they're actually, hmm, how do I put this? They're, they're, I'm waiting. I'm waiting right now because we're hoping, you know, that maybe they'll receive the right attention. And if I, didn't have to release a song as an independent artist or could even get a cut from someone else that would be amazing so that's kind of where we're at right now with these new ones um you know i actually never even cared about being an artist mm. i wanted to be a songwriter i still want to be a songwriter but you know when i started and started getting to know people up there and you know people that shot me straight they're like Brie, you got a better chance of being an artist and presenting yourself as an artist than a songwriter because, yeah. you know, like the people that are songwriters, they don't know you. <laughs> if they've had a gut, the chances are they're not going to want to write with you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, and that's kind of the direction I took, but that was actually never really the plan. And, you know, even now, if I get somebody else to cut my songs, I'm perfectly fine with that, you know, but look, there's a ton of artists, like actually some of the biggest artists started out that way. Yeah. I mean, look, Harvey, uh, Sam Hunt, Chris Stapleton. I mean, the list goes on and on, yep. you know, started out writing for other people and got yeah. their name in the hat that way. But, you know, yeah. songwriting is my passion way more than being an artist mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. It really is. I mean, I like to be on stage. I do. I, I mean, I love to interact with the crowd and all of that stuff. But, you know, when I, when I really feel the most whole and the most like, you know, I guess like I'm fulfilling my purpose is when I'm writing a song yeah. and not just performing. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So cool. Perfect. Okay. So we have a fun section, which we've now called um, 20 questions plus one. <laughs> okay. Okay. These are really, really fun questions, so we get to know you a bit better, and yeah, we we'll just have a laugh. And remember, there's no right or wrong <laughs> answer. They are just fun. It doesn't matter what you say, anything kind of goes. It's awesome. Cool. I'm all about it. <laughs> Good. That's what we like. So, early bird or night owl? Night owl. <laughs> actually both because i don't sleep very much just to be honest with you but <laughs> i tend to be up at night a lot more in the mornings 
<laughs> okay. What um, TV family would you be a member of? Oh, gosh, that's hard. I thought these were supposed to be fun. <laughs> um, I like Modern Family because it kind of reminds me of my own family, to be honest. Oh, Modern yeah. Family, though. I love that. Um, yeah, okay, family. if we had a look on your phone or your iPod, what would be your guilty pleasure music? What would be hidden in there? Guilty pleasure music. Mmm... I don't know. Like I listen to only good music. So that's hard. I mean, but I, I do like every once in a while, just like to listen to sort of like vapid pop. Like I will listen to Cardi B, and, you know, not feel bad about it at all. Cause I think it's great. You know, a lot of musicians. And when I was younger, I was like this too. Like I couldn't listen to pop music. I couldn't listen to anything that the kids like. And now I'm just like, Oh, I know what my guilty pleasure is. Okay. So Walker <laughs> Hayes just came out with this song and it's like, yeah, we fancy like Applebee's on date nights. Mm -mm, da, 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 da. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. It's called Fancy Like and it's just such a silly song and it's just straight up country pop slash country hip hop. And, um, <laughs> but I, I love it. Like I, I had it on repeat all day yesterday and the lyrics are literally like about Applebee's and drinking Natty Light and living in a trailer, and it's it's wonderful. <laughs> That's very cool. I love, I love that. Okay, what's the weirdest, sweetest, funniest thing a fan has ever done for you? <sighs> I've definitely had some weird stuff. <laughs> I think, you know, everybody deals with that. <clears throat> um, so <laughs> I have this one guy. I hope he doesn't see this. He's the sweetest. His name is Johan. I think he lives somewhere in Europe. I don't know. But he's just been a fan since day one. And he does not, nothing creepy about it or anything. But he makes edits of me sometimes. And um, edits, like, it's like, of me like a picture that I post and then he'll put an edit behind it and the edit will be like of horses running down a mountainside or like my face mixed with a rose or something but the problem is like I would love to repost them um but they make me look super creepy for some reason like he'll zoom in on my face and I'm like doing this and then it's like the horse in the background and I don't know like I showed a couple of my friends and they just died out laughing there I'll try to find one and show y'all what I'm talking about um <laughs> you know he does it once in a while and I'm so like I said I think he just truly loves my music respects me and and wants to do something he's like you know just just wanted to send you this edit today and I'm like well thank you so much that's so sweet and it is so sweet but the I have been made fun of pretty hardcore for these by, by my circle of friends because um like it makes me look like the creepy person and uh, <laughs> it does like I don't I can't explain it it's just like sometimes he'll zoom in on my face and I'm like just, like, scary. Um, probably that and now I'm trying to think of anything else that's I mean you know besides from the normal okay here's a perfect one just I don't know if you can see this this is the latest one he did like I don't know if you'll be able to see this let me let me try Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah. See it? Yeah. <laughs> see how I don't know what it is, but it makes me feel like I look creepy. Do I look creepy? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, I think that it looks fun, actually. It's quite good. That, that one does not make you look creepy. Maybe, maybe there's other ones that make you look creepy, but yeah. I, yeah, well that was quite sweet. That doesn't, okay. Yeah, they are sweet. <laughs> but sweet. I get them pretty regularly. <laughs> and uh I'm trying to think of, you know, uh, I don't know. 
I don't, I wish I had a, I can't think of anything that's just hilarious right now, but um, that's, oh, here's another one. <laughs> this one, okay, you cannot say I don't look creepy on this one because <laughs> I'm like in front of a crystal ball, like, and it looks like I have like a, I don't know what it is in my mouth. It looks like I have like a, like a blunt, like a skinny blunt in my mouth or something. Why can't I zoom in on this? I may not be able to, may not be able to see this one as well. You see that oh, one? I mean, one off, yeah. Yeah, this, this thing here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it almost makes it look like, like, like vampire blood or something coming down. You're like, like, yeah. Yeah. That yeah. one was a bit, a bit more. Okay, that one I would agree is a little, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The picture's so gorgeous, but of course, yeah, the way is so up close. Way their and head. Yeah. But that's his style, you know. He doesn't mean anything by it, but that's his style. But I, I posted a couple of them once, and my friends were like, "You're just like a psycho. What? Are you, what is that?" I'm like, well, you're just like, man. Like, like you're just being nice." Anyway, it's such a weird. You know, it's such a weird. Uh, position to be in because I'm not famous by any means. It's so weird to even think I have fans, but I do have a few. I had a couple ladies come up to me at my, my last show and they're like, we're such big fans. Can we have a picture? And I'm still relatively at the beginning of my career and I'm like, are y'all talking to me? <laughs> you know? Oh, that's sweet. Man. That's really cool. that sweet. Yeah. But, um, boots or heels? boots definitely i mean i love heels but you know I'm, I'm not 23 anymore and i like to be comfortable and i also <laughs> like to kind of move around when i'm on stage and i don't really look forward to busting my honkus in front of everybody which is more <laughs> likely to happen in heels so yeah they can be a death trap um what's your favorite drink like alcohol or just in general both. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, my favorite alcoholic drink is probably whiskey. Like, I love Jack Daniels. I really do. I honestly don't drink it too much because it doesn't love me. <laughs> um, you know, there's at least a love-hate relationship. And then my favorite just drink, drink. I love the, um, the, oh my gosh, the, the, in a brain park the green lattes the matcha lattes um or frappuccinos or whatever they are the frozen green things from starbucks why can't i think of the name of it it's like the matcha frappuccinos and I it's think that's what they call it yes those are so good they're amazing and they got a lot of caffeine so it keeps it. you a buzz <laughs> it keeps you going for the rest of the night <laughs> and it's legal so there you go. <laughs> um, what's your favorite holiday? Halloween used to be, I mean, it's still probably my favorite, but honestly, I'm not a big fan of holidays. I just feel like there are a lot of like hype and pomp and, and it's a lot of money to be spent for kind of things that don't matter. You know what I mean? Like, like a lot of them have their reason for the season or whatever. But, you know, when and if I do get to enjoy a holiday, I do like Halloween a lot. Like, I actually um, put a haunted house on with my students uh, year before last. And we, like, worked so hard on it. But, you know, we made, like, a pretty good bit of money. It was a fundraiser. That was fun. I mean, we were scaring the crap out of people. We were scaring little kids so bad that they were, like, crying when they left. And I was like, oh, yeah. like, we are doing our jobs. So that was fun. Um, what's your favorite animal? I mean, bears. I really love bears a lot. There's, a, like as far as just all animals, I don't know, like they're fuzzy and cuddly, but also ferocious. Like they just have a cool 
duality, I guess, about them. But I mean, as far as domestic animals, I'm more of a dog than a cat person. But I like I like animals, all animals, unless it's like a rat or something. You know? Snakes, yeah. <laughs> There's certain animals I just can't like. <laughs> right. Um, okay, if you could add someone to Mount Rushmore, who would it be and why? It doesn't have to be anybody political, just anybody you want out there. Hmm. I mean, I'd say if I had it, it would be John Prine because John Prine is my hero. I love his songwriting style. I loved him as a person. I, I just, you know, could cry thinking about it right now because, you know, we lost him to COVID. Um, but I just think he was, in my opinion, he's the greatest songwriter of all time. And I know a lot of people would have taken issue with that. But I love John Prine, and I think he's an American staple. And, uh, yeah, if there's somebody I'd want to look at on the side of a mountain, it'd probably be him. Perfect. I love that. Okay. So you told us who your first concert was. Okay. How about what? who would you love to tour with? If you could tour with anybody, who would you love to tour with? Hmm. I mean, right now, like s specifically, I'd love to tour with Lainey Wilson because we're from the same area and I feel like we have really similar attitudes and we even, you know, know some of the same people. Like I, I just think that'd be a hoot. I think it'd be fun. You know, I think she's, she's great and a great writer and, you know, just seems like a cool girl. I don't, I have met her, but I don't know her personally. And it was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, like, if I'm just speaking, you know, just complete pipe dream, un like, it would never happen, but I'd love it. I mean, I'd love to tour. Gosh, that's so hard. I mean, I love Dolly. Everybody loves Dolly, but how can you not love Dolly? She would be, <laughs> love she would be amazing. So, or Willie. I mean, I know we're talk thinking about women here, but, you know, Willie Nelson, he would be so awesome. <laughs> that would be fun to talk with him. <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. he, if, if we're talking about pipe dreams, those two would be so much fun. <laughs> like, I would literally just, be sit just feel like I'm in heaven, just sitting there on the bus with them. Or yeah. Getting to be in either one of their presents, it would just be be so cool you know? that would be awesome mm -hmm. for sure definitely <gasps> so what's your favorite color oh, hold on Green. so what's your favorite color definitely green i just you know i it just is a calming color to me reminds me of nature and i like it that's cool. I like that. Beautiful color. Yeah. Definitely. So what's the best thing since sliced bread? I mean, if I'm being really honest, me? I'm pretty <laughs> awesome. I love it. Awesome. I'm hoping people realize it, but, you know, like, I'm pretty, pretty damn cool. So, <laughs> you know, besides me, then... Probably the best thing would be iPhones. iPhones and me. Yeah, since life. <laughs> there's a country song in there somewhere. iPhones yeah, and there's me. Like, there's, yeah. <laughs> you know, I had this idea for a line, and I, I haven't even thought about it in years, but it was uh, instead of walking around with your head in the cloud, it was walking around with your head in an eye cloud. <laughs> that would be cute. Just talking about how that people is. are always like, phones now yes yep. never did anything with it but you never know you've got a title you got you know a title there so. <laughs> yeah. or a great little hook yeah definitely <laughs> if you could talk to anyone alive or dead who would you want to talk with and what would you want to talk about hmm alive or dead oh lord Okay, let me skip a political answer here. Huh. 
because Lord knows we don't want to get into that. Because <laughs> 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 if I said who I really want to say, it would just like open up a whole new can of worms. And I just don't think we have time um, <laughs> or, or the energy. I'm just not sure. Uh, let me see. You know, I did not think this before. I was not a big fan of him. But, you know, just off the top of my head, and trust me, I am not right wing. I'm not left. This has nothing to do with my political views. I will say I'm a registered independent. Always have been. Always will be. But um, George Bush Jr., you know, I saw this uh, special, like this CBS special of him the other day, and he, it was my first time seeing him, like, just as himself and not in a political realm, and he was just, like, in his jeans and his boots and his, I think he had, like, a fishing shirt on, and he was just riding around his ranch and just talking about the ranch and, you know, some trees they had just grown. And he just seems like the most, like, cool, laid-back guy. Mm -hmm. And then, on top of that, what really, really just struck me was that he had taken up painting. And, I mean, like, really recently has taken up painting. And he had this studio, and he was showing his paintings and they were amazing. They were so good. I was like, how do you like start this in your sixties and be this good? And, and they had so much emotion behind them and his paintings were of like immigrants that he had met, that he had talked to. Like most of them were, some of them were of other things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was a, a passion of his was immigration reform and, you know, it never got done the way that he wanted it to be done. But you know, that's also, I would say I don't have political passions, but if I had one, it would be immigration reform. You know, um, everybody deserves a chance and I'm a big believer in that, but that just threw me for a loop because, you know, a lot of people wrote him off as well you got what you had because of your daddy and etc cetera, etc cetera. but like it just made me realize like he's actually a very intelligent talented talented person and anyone who can be successful and then like start something new and and go in a totally different direction and and mm -hmm. just be like well I'm gonna do this now I'm just so impressed by that like by someone who can you know, I guess reinvent the wheel when they don't, don't have to. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so yeah. So, so. George Jr. Can you make a great point in that, that you can be anything or do anything you want at any age and there should be, I mean, I agree to, I think there might be some restraints, you know, I think they have some age limits on some things, but in general speaking, <laughs> you can be whatever you want to be at whatever age you want to be, you know, it's, yeah. it's, yeah. it's your call. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And I mean, just, you know, somebody who's, made themselves a success in one area and then ended up doing something else in another area and just, you know, really flourishing and, and not having to rely, like say somebody made it big in music, but then ended up starting their own business. And okay. Like I'll give you a perfect example. Kix Brooks, perfect example. He doesn't, he wouldn't have to do anything else, but you know, after him and Ronnie had his run, he started Arrington Vineyards and it's like the only vineyard in that area of Tennessee, maybe in Tennessee. I don't even know if there is other vineyards in Tennessee and mm -hmm. super successful. And, you know, he has so many other irons in the fire, but you know, he did Arrington Vineyards and then he ended up doing the American country countdown as well. And, he, you know, just like, it's very obvious that regardless of the music, he would have been successful no matter what, you know, because he's just an intelligent driven person. And that's kind of, you know, what I meant with the George Bush Jr. thing too, is like they, so there's way more 
layers to him than what I realized and facets to his personality. So that mm-hmm. that's so impressive to me. That is, that's wonderful. So if you weren't doing what you're doing today, including music, what would you be doing? Oh gosh. What would I be doing? Um, you know, I had this weird like thing where I wanted to join the Peace Corps for a long time when I was younger and that never happened. But yeah, something like super adventurous and, and, you know, where I wouldn't have, I'd be gone and, you know, helping and being productive and, and, or like a missionary or something like that. Like that's, that's kind of what I see if I, if I hadn't, if life, this life hadn't been given to me. Yeah. yeah, the Peace Corps. I always wanted to be in the Peace Corps. I just think that'd be so cool. That'd be awesome. <laughs> if you could be a Disney character, what character would you be? Tiana. I mean, I have to be Tiana because A, she's from Louisiana, and B, she's the only one that actually like had a normal life and didn't have everything handed to her. <laughs> you know, actually was the hard worker. You know, that whole movie is about working hard. And luckily that was my daughter's like first and favorite Disney movie. So, you know, I love Tiana's the bomb because Tiana's living in the real world with everybody else. I love it. That scene where she falls asleep and just as she falls asleep, the alarm goes off and she turns it off and she's back up and she's back out oh, yeah. again. And it's like, Wow. Do you know? She's tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like her. Tiana, for sure. What's your favorite flavor of ice cream? To be honest, I'm, I'm not a big ice cream eater. Like, I don't know. I know that's weird, but um, there are these things at Sonic that um, they're called a cream slush. And it's a whatever slushy flavor you want, just with ice cream in it. And a strawberry Cream slush, I will say, is one of the best things I've ever eaten. So I guess strawberry. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> What's your current go-to snack? Hmm. I mean, if I just really, like, want to s- snack and indulge, I like McDonald's chicken nuggets. Me and my daughter just got some more. And the fact that I have a three-year-old is always a good excuse to go get McDonald's <laughs> chicken nuggets. You know? Use a child. Free excuse. <laughs> yeah. But I, I snack on Lay's potato chips a lot. Just plain Lay's potato chips. I swear they do wonders for your voice. They really do. Um, so, just, yeah. Chicken nuggets and potato chips probably are <laughs> That's a great thing. <laughs> and they're good together too. You know, you don't have to have French fries. <laughs> so hypothetically, if I came to Louisiana with a dead body and said, do you know a good place to hide this? Do you? Oh, I got several good places. I mean, <laughs> like, take your pick. We got a giant pond, you know, on some family land. My mom lives on Lake Darvone, the like third biggest lake in Louisiana. Um, we got a lot of farmland with cows right down the road. That's my husband's grandpa's. Um, yeah, like I am the girl that you need to know if you have a dead body, honestly. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> we'll remember that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. What would be a good theme song for your life or this point in your life? Um, you know, I am a believer. I am a Christian. I do think that, you know, my faith was a big reason that I got out of everything I got out of. You know, I told y'all I uh, had a rough go of it in my 20s. And you don't see a lot of people that did 18 months in prison become teachers and then, you know, songwriters and artists and everything. And I do believe it's from the grace of God. And, you know, I'm just going to plug this girl because I just think this was such an awesome song. I just heard this today and you know, there hasn't been a crossover hit in so long. Um, but I just had it on repeat and I played it over and over again. And I mean, if y'all want to like play it maybe sometime if you go back and edit this or whatever, but this girl named Ann Wilson She's got a song called My Jesus, 
And I'm telling you, it is such a powerful song. And I truly, it, it came up on the Spotify playlist with Maddie and Tay and Miranda Lambert and Dan and Shay and Lainey Wilson and all these other people. And um, I mean, it's a Christian country song, but I'm telling you, it's so good. I think it might be a crossover. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, you remember um, Mercy Me? What was that mm-hmm. Mercy Me song that was the yeah. crossover? I, can't remember only, I can only imagine. Like, that was this straight yeah. Christian song, but it was so good. Like mm-hmm. nobody could deny it. it was so good. It was so powerful. I mean, in my opinion, for what it's worth, for the, you know, one and a half cents that it's worth, that song right there, that I hope that it happens because it's super powerful. And it does, I do feel like that's my theme song. Um, so, yeah. And then a better known, if I had to pick a better known song, that would be my theme song. Um, gosh, I don't know. That's a hard one. Uh You know, maybe, maybe, um, well, no, that wouldn't really represent me. Like maybe John Prine's In Spite of Ourselves, because the song's talking about like, in spite of ourselves, everything's going to be fine. Everything is going to be, you know, we'll be sitting on a rainbow. So yeah. that one, I love his tongue in cheek, you know, kind of sense of humor, but yeah. probably that one. Yeah. <laughs> Both good choices. Mm-hmm. So tell our audience a recommendation of an album, a song, an artist, something that they should listen to before they die. Okay. So first of all, um, me, you should definitely listen to me. I have some new stuff coming out. So breezemusic.com, B-R-I-S music.com. That's all you got to go to. And all the social medias that you could ever want to see are there. My YouTube book of face chat snap all that um but besides for me you know i have been discovering some really cool new artists lately morgan wade she's up and coming and she mm-hmm. is a bad a i'm not sure i can say the real word but she is she's awesome like she, she's just like just kind of rough i mean not you know mm-hmm. physically but like you know just raw and rough and i love it like as far as the energy and the vibe that it gives off. I would compare her to like Tyler Childers, even though she doesn't sound that way. Yes. So Morgan Wade is awesome. Um, another artist I've been super into is a uh, Parker McCollum. You know, he's a younger mm-hmm. artist. He's kind of like Texas country almost. Um, he's got some great songs. I've been listening to some of his older albums um, and someone else that I have recently discovered that I honestly was at first, it sounds mean, but I didn't want to really give it a chance because of the fact that she's a Hollywood actress. But Chrissy Metz, Chrissy mm. Metz, she's got some good stuff. So mm. those three right now, that's, that's who I'm into lately. And, and um, you know, I always go through phases, but I mean, yeah, any of those, uh, but you know, maybe I need to pick somebody more streamlined since I say you you need to listen to them before you die. And I mean, um, Guy Clark, Ooh, Robert Earl Keane, mm-hmm. you know, like that. Just any singer songwriter that's yeah. just been true to themselves. That's the type of people you really need to listen to because they're they're the true storyteller and they've really lived it and they'll make you laugh and cry. And it's not just like a fun beat, you know, where you don't have to think about anything. It's therapy. Yeah, definitely. That's awesome. I love that. It's a great way. Okay. The last question. Who is your favorite crazy woman country host? Wait, what now? Y'all broke up. Who's my favorite one? (laughs) (laughs) who is your favorite crazy women country host i was just buying myself some time there yeah, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but someone else that was earlier was like oh look we can't see you you're, you're clicking out and i'm like okay seriously yeah okay so um hmm that's a tough one I'm going to say, no offense, Donna, 
but I'm going to have to go with Paula because she has an accent. Well, you yeah. <laughs> and she lives in Spain, and I'm jealous of that. Like, that's, you know, that's up there on my bucket list. So, and look at her tattoos. Okay. Donna, do you have tattoos? I, I do on my ankle, but I'm not going to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send Never you a text mind. message. I have your I have your number, so I'll send you a text. Just show me your ankle. Come on now. Just... <laughs> I've got a Jack Daniels one on my uh, I've got a Jack Daniels on my leg. Oh, no, do y'all always ask people that though? <laughs> oh, somebody's no. awake. This is my Hi. daughter. Hi. Hi, sweetie. She just How are you? Up. Hey. Yep. Hi. 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 <laughs> so the That's reason that she has this thank you the reason that she has this Beatles haircut is because um she decided that she wanted to be a hairdresser to her dolls okay. and herself and in fact I was doing a, a zoom like kind of like this one right here when it happens so um yeah she's she's got the style going man why not it works yeah, it's cool yeah, I, I will say it's a lot easier than on me. <laughs> oh, so Look what she got, boo. Look. Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it? That's Tigger. It's Tigger. Boing, 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 boing. He's cute, huh? <laughs> Surfer dude. So, okay, anyway, so that's a haircut. There you go. I will see him yeah. next time when I go to your house. <laughs> you can come to my house. I have loads of teddy bears. See, look, teddy bears everywhere. See, look at all our teddy bears, Briss. Yeah. That looks fun, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to go back in there with dad so mom can finish up? All right. Well, just, just get, get your tablet and your phone or something and hang out behind me. How's that sound? It's getting charged. Go get it from daddy. It's my tablet. It's up? I'm sorry. Awesome. Perfect. So, um, what have you got in store for the rest of 2021? Oh, man. There is so much in store. I mean, you know, I got uh, the trip com coming up to Nashville, and uh, that's going to be just, I think, a good experience for me. And like I said, we're doing a lot of co-writing, so hopefully we'll get some co-writes out of the way but um you know like i said i have six songs that i just recorded that are coming out and i also have a documentary coming out because you know it's funny but like i have never really shared my story publicly about how everything happened and you know I, the dark road that i went down you know i just mm -hmm. really things truly got bad like if it if i hadn't have been arrested i would not have made it and i'll mm -hmm. just tell you that much um and nobody knew, including myself, whether I was going to make it out of all that alive. And I did. And, you know, I just felt like it was time to share my story. And it's important to because, you know, people need to know that when you hit bottom, you can come back up. And when you think your life is over, it's not. It's just the end of a chapter. That's what I like to say. You know, like it's not the end of your life. You're just ending that chapter yeah. and so uh you know and i wrote a couple of songs that kind of share my story for the first time too it, you know like it's been 10 years and i'm like okay i'm finally ready for this and so yeah so i'm i did a documentary it's not too long it's about like 20 minutes or so it's actually still being edited right now um but we're gonna put the documentary out we're gonna put the songs out and you know, um, we're going to keep plugging and luckily I've been able to kind of, you know, get a good team behind me. So, and, you know, my main goal is to try to help somebody else because I think that what happened to me happened for a reason. And I think that I'm here for a reason. And I think that reason 
should and could be to help other people. And that is more important than the music. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That is awesome. That's Sounds wonderful. amazing. So we look forward to uh, obviously seeing the documentary. Really looking forward to that. Yeah. And obviously hearing all the new music. Definitely. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, it's going to be good. Uh, you know, my producer, he's he's been uh, doing it a long time. He's just made some really good tracks. And then um, I had some awesome musicians that, like, the, the guy that played bass on my tracks toured with Robert Plant. Um, you know, the, the guy who played guitar, um, tours with Lucinda Williams. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're like... Awesome. Not. Yeah. Um, the Dobro player, his name's Josh Matheny. He's actually a friend of mine, but he, he I'm not even going to sit here and continue to name drop because mm -hmm. that's just rude, but he has literally played with just about everybody. He got the Country Music Hall of Fame Musician Spotlight Award um, wow. like two years ago because he's just, amazing. he's a man, like yeah. for real. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Oh, perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Sounds awesome. Can't wait to hear it now. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me neither. I'm ready for him to be done. I'm so impatient. Like we were talking about patience a while ago. I'm like, <laughs> I want this all to be done, but you know, it's, it's got to be good and it's a work in progress. And, um, but yeah, I think that um, the first release is uh, a song called If These Boots Could Talk. And it's basically tells my story, but in a, I think in a, in a way that is relatable, not so personal and streamlined to my story that people can't get into it. Yeah. And, um, and then we'll release that and uh, the documentary around the same time. And Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Well, we look Perfect. forward to it. Thank yes. you so much again for joining us today. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thank you all so much. Thanks for putting up with me. Um, just a disclaimer. I don't actually think that I'm the coolest thing since sliced bread. <laughs> <laughs> I only think I'm the coolest thing since uh, I don't know laptops like that's not that cool it's just sort of cool and, and then um, also like thank y'all so much for having me and meeting my daughter and I hope that you know we can do this again and um I definitely want to play labels off for y'all because after our conversation about the two percenters <laughs> of women in radio <laughs> you need to hear this song because I'm you're gonna love it I'm telling you I hope I hope to record it next you know my next little batch so that'd be great yeah, I'm looking it. forward to it yeah yep yeah. me too yeah thank you thank very you much friends for Yes. And thank you, friends, for joining us for another episode of Crazy Women Country. Have a great day. Bye, guys. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank y'all. If you enjoyed today's episode of Crazy Women Country, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Be sure to click the subscribe button for new interviews weekly. And thank you, friends, for joining us today on Crazy Women Country, where women's voices matter. <laughs>